Okay, let's continue our discussion of polynomial functions and their zeros. It turns out you can't go very far without talking about complex numbers, and the reason is you could have a per perfectly innocent looking uh, polynomial function like f of x equals x squared plus 5. If you wanted to find the zeros of that, you would set the polynomial equal to zero, right? But it turns out there was no real solution to this, so in order to talk about the zeros, you'd have to have a bigger number system, and that's where we that's how we introduce the complex num numbers in order to find all the solutions to polynomial functions. All we have to do is define i to be the, square, the positive square root of negative 1. That makes i squared equal to negative 1. And then we define the complex number system to be any number that, that can be written as the, in the form as a plus bi. One thing I forgot to say in my definition here is that a and b must be real. Okay, a and b must be real numbers. Okay, uh, the real part is called A, and the imaginary part is called B. Um, so, for this complex number here, 3 minus 5i, the real part is 3, the imaginary part is negative 5. It's not negative 5i, it's just negative 5. Okay, this is really important here. Um, <clears throat> the number 4 is a complex number, because it can be written as uh, a real number plus a real number times i. It just so happens that the imaginary part is 0. So every real number is a complex number whose imaginary part is zero. Uh, this we, we call this uh, a purely ima imaginary number, or just simply an ima imaginary number, i over two. Uh, in this in this case, the real part would be zero, and the imaginary part would be one half. The complex number two minus i squared or three over two would be could be written. Uh, the, the real part would be 1 if you simplify it, and the imaginary part would be negative radical 3 over 2. Okay, perhaps the most important property for solving quadratic equations is this result right here. Whenever you encounter a square root of a negative number, now I'm saying that because we're assuming A is a positive real number, okay? So this is definitely a negative number instead of a square root. It could be written as I times the square root of a positive real number. Negative on the inside of a square root becomes I on the outside. It's easy to see why, because um, uh, when, when you break up, when you write negative a as negative one times a and break it into the product of two rad radicals, we we define the first radical to be i. So it follows straight from the definition. Okay, so now now that we have the complex numbers, we, we can solve. Turns out we 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 can find all the zeros of any polynomial function, as we'll show in the next sec section. But anyway. We can certainly solve this polynomial equation. Uh, if you add 5 to both sides, or I should say add negative 5 to both sides and take plus or minus the square root, you get that x equals plus or minus i square root of 5. Simplifying some expressions here, when you multiply this out using the uh, FOIL method, notice the last term you get minus 3i squared, right? Of course i squared is negative 1, so that becomes plus 3. Doesn't this become plus 3 in the end here? That's why your final answer would be 13 minus 13i. Same is th true here. When, when you use the distributive law to multiply this out, the first term is 8i, but the last term is going to be minus 12i squared, which, which, which becomes a plus 12, doesn't it? That's why your answer is 8i plus 12. Uh, I want to look at these two together, because these are going to come up in the next section here. Uh, these are called uh, ir irrational con conjugates. Um, when you multiply a number times its con conjugate, what happens? Using the difference of two squares, it's the first number squared minus the second number squared, and just this just becomes a five. Notice your answer is not going to have any square roots in it, is it? It's going to be a rational number. Similarly, if you have a, these are called complex conjugates, when you multiply a number times its complex conj conjugate, you're not going to have any i's. And the reason is because you get the difference of two squares. The second term, you get a minus 9i squared. Remember, i squared is negative 1, so this just becomes plus 9. That's how it works. It's really important. All right, so why don't you try these two? Notice, these are conjugates here. So when you, when you multiply the first two together, you shouldn't have any uh, irrational numbers in your answer. And when you multiply the second two together, you shouldn't have any um, i's in your final answer. The first one, I got negative 3, 
It's the first one squared minus the second one squared. Notice the second one squared becomes 4 times 3, which is 12. So it's 9 minus 12 is negative 3. Second one, you get 7 squared minus 5i squared. So you should have gotten minus 25i squared, which becomes a plus 25. Final answer is 74. All right, so when you, uh, in math 90, when, when, you, when you solve these quadratic equations equaling 0, what you were doing is you were finding the zeros of this polynomial function x squared plus 2x plus 6. Does every uh, quad quadratic function have to have any have to have real zeros? Not necessarily. And in fact, if you use the quadratic formula on this, uh, you should have gotten x equals negative 2 plus or minus square root of 20 over 2. The negative um, becomes an i on the outside. And the 20 is 4 times 5. The 2 comes on the outside. And then you could factor the 2 on the top and bottom, and they cancel. There's your final answer. So this polynomial function, x squared plus 2x plus 6, has no real zeros. It has two non-real zeros. Remember, graphically, that means that the graph of this, um, this parabola does not cross the x-axis, does it? Because it's not, it's, they're not real zeros. Anyway, the most important thing here is if you have a quadratic equation, uh, if, a, if, a, if, a, if a quadratic equation with real coefficients has two non-real zeros, they have to occur in con conjugate pairs. Okay? Notice these are con conjugate pairs. All right, we've got time for some fun stuff now. Okay, let's do some fun stuff. Find the formula for a quadratic polynomial, or you can say a second degree polynomial, with real coefficients. If it has a zero here at negative 2i, and p of zero equals 3. Now, from what I just said, the, the, um, the zeros, if, you have a, if it has real coefficients and you have a non-real zero, they have to occur in con conjugate pairs. So what, what is the con conjugate of uh, negative 2i? It'd be plus 2i, right? So if those are your zeros, you can write it as factors like this. When you multiply them together, you get this, and you can find a by plugging in the point 0, 3, and so that a equals 3 fourths. There's your polynomial function. All right, how about this? What if I talk about a quadratic polynomial function with real coefficients? If it has a zero here, remember, they have to occur in conj conjugate pairs. That's what we just talked about. Uh, so this is a little harder to see why this works, but if 1 plus i is a 0, isn't x minus 1 plus i a factor? But also the conjugate of this has to be a 0, 1 minus i. So that means x minus that also has to be a factor. And put an a in front, because you can't assume a is 1. Put a, put a, a real number a in front, and we'll find a. Now this is where it gets a little, a little harder. You multiply it out carefully, you get this. You may have to hit the pause button and check me on this. And then when you uh, combine like, like terms, notice at the end here you get 1 minus i squared, right? The i x's cancel, by the way. So 1 minus i squared is 1 plus 1, which is 2. That's where that comes from. So you get a times x squared minus 2x plus 2. Now you can find the coefficient a at the end. Plug in the point 0, 4. When, when x is 0, this becomes 2 inside of here. 2a equals 4, a equals 2. Bingo. There's your polynomial function. I've got time for one more. Try this one. See if you can find a, uh, the form for the quadratic function with rational coefficients that has an irrational zero here. I'll just give you a hint. It works the same way as with non-real zeros. Okay, those two have to occur in conjugate pairs. So if, if you have a zero at 1 plus square root of 2, x minus that has to be a factor. But similarly, you have to have a 1 minus square root of 2 as a zero also. Uh, and so x minus 1 minus square root of 2 also has to be a factor. Multiplying out is kind of a pain. Uh, you got to be careful on that. You get this. Uh, no, let's, let's focus on the very end. You're, you're going to get 1 squared minus square root of 2 squared, which is just 1 minus 2. Here, the radical 2x's cancel, so you get this. And then you can find a. You can find a by uh, plugging in when x is 0, y is 6. When x is 0, this becomes negative 1. Negative a is 6. Uh-oh, that's wrong. a is negative 1, 6, isn't it? a is negative 1, 6, so it should be this. There's your answer. 
Alrighty, I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.